Rachel, just what did you tell your relatives this time? My phone has been blowing up with calls from them nonstop, and it's driving me up the wall. Well, 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 if it isn't Clara. And just what kind of way is that to talk to your mother-in-law? Honestly, one might get the impression that you really didn't like me. I really don't think that's it. I'm asking you because your name came up in so many of those phone calls that I'm sure you had something to do with it. Now, can you please stop spreading rumors about me to other members of your family? What did I do to even make you want to do something like this? Oh, please, I am not doing anything of the sort. All I'm doing is casually complaining about my daughter-in-law, but everyone does that. Well, I'm starting to get people accusing me of things that I'd never even done before, and the other half are saying that I'm bad for not doing enough, or anything for that matter, in terms of taking care of the house. Not only that, but I've also had people upset because they heard that I never went to go visit you, and all I do is whatever I want with my husband's money. People were yelling at me because they thought that I was just completely ignoring you when you tried to reach out to me. I am sick and tired of people getting mad at me and lecturing me about things that just simply aren't true. And since all of these lectures I'm receiving end with them telling me to be more considerate of how you feel, I can only assume that you're the source of all this. Hmm. So you've really been getting told all that stuff? Well... It isn't like any of it is wrong, exactly. You should be taking better care of me as my daughter-in-law. I have always done my utmost to try and care for and respect you, Rachel. I mean, I go over to your house at least two or three times a week to help out, don't I? And when I'm over there, I do clean the house and do the yard work. I've even gone out to do your shopping for you and take you to your doctor's appointments when they come up. And on top of that, I've also been sending you money every single month. I know that you're still dealing with debt left by Frank ever since he passed away, but I'm already sending almost $2,000 a month. So I would really appreciate it if you would stop telling people that I don't do anything for you. Is this really what you want to do right now? You want to get in a fight with your poor old mother-in-law? I'm not trying to start a fight or anything like that, but I'm reaching the limits of my patience I mean, you're ruining my reputation, not just with your family, but even people who live in your neighborhood. I am just getting sick and tired of having to field waves of angry calls every time you decide to spread new rumors about me. Oh please, I'm not even doing anything bad. All I'm doing is grumbling about the little things in life. Can you at least allow an old lady like me to have that? And I'm happy to know that family and friends care enough to stick up for me like that. It's good that they are always keeping you on your toes. Otherwise, you really would stop doing anything for me. Besides, if the lesson they are trying to teach is to respect your elders, then you had better listen up. I have listened to you plenty, thank you very much. But the fact of the matter is that I have been helping you. And I've been doing it all while my own husband has been away for so long on his business trip. And yet despite all of that, I don't get a word of gratitude or appreciation from you. In fact, all you do is make it so that I'm ganged up on by everyone. And just what is wrong with that, huh? Don't you think you're being really rude to me right now? You think that I'm being rude? That's rich. You're acting as if you're trying to get back at me for doing something that I didn't even do. I think I'm going to stop coming over as frequently. And I think I'm also going to send less money over every month. If you need someone to drive you around to the store or appointments, You'll just have to call a cab or something. Excuse me? You're going to do what? How dare you treat me like this? Just who do you think you are, huh? You're really just going to abandon your mother-in-law like this? Well, it seems like no matter what I say or do, I still get treated the same, so I don't see the harm in pulling back from this situation. Of all the insolent little... You really need to learn your place in this family, Clara. You've been married two years and still haven't had any kids. You don't get to talk as if you're all high and mighty after that. That's because Cameron had to leave for his business trip four months after we got married. How could I possibly have gotten pregnant since then? Obviously, we've talked about trying for kids once he's back, but what's happening right now has nothing to do with children. Now, I'm going to say this just once more. 
If I keep getting phone calls accusing me of things I've never done before, I'm going to keep reducing the amount of money that I send every month. Have I made myself clear? You little brat. Someone needs to train you on how to be a good wife and daughter-in-law. Don't get all uppity just because you're married to my son. If you think we're through here, you have got another thing coming. I'm going to whip you into shape. Hey, George. I'm really sorry for sending so many texts today. I got to my hotel and I'm resting. Carla! Oh my goodness! Is everything okay? I just saw your one text where you said that you couldn't take it anymore and then nothing. I just saw your one text where you said that you couldn't take it anymore and then nothing. I was so worried when I didn't hear anything from you after that. Is everything alright? Oh, thank you so much for worrying about me. I guess the rest of my messages couldn't send because the battery died right as I sent them. I really just didn't know what to think. I was worried I would have to call the police and rush back home right away or something like that. I know. I'm really sorry about all that. I just forgot to charge my phone and then didn't have a chance to take my charger with me. Well, just as long as you're safe. That's all I really care about. Did something happen that I should know about? What can you take any more of? It's your mom, George. I can't take any more of your mom. What do you mean? What's going on between the two of you? Your mom has been spreading rumors about me to your relatives and her neighbors. All this time, she rallied them all to show up at my house unannounced so that she could try to force me to apologize to her. Hold on a second. Are you serious? That is so crazy! Did my mom really do something like that? What's the matter with you? I know, it's wild, but I really am telling the truth. You have to believe me. I barely cracked our door and she forced her way and started shouting at me in front of everyone about how horrible I was. Then she demanded that I got on my hands and knees and beg for her forgiveness. Thankfully, a building manager was nearby and chased them off when he heard the commotion. But I'm too scared to go home now, so I'm staying in a hotel. I remember you saying that you two were having a lot of trouble getting along with each other, but this is on a whole nother level. Carla, I am so, so sorry that you had to go through all of this. It's okay, George. You didn't do anything wrong. You shouldn't be the one apologizing. I know that you've tried to talk to your mom over and over again about going easier on me. Sure, but I guess now this means I really need to lay into her and make it clear that I'm serious. George... I really appreciate how much this means to you, but maybe you should just stop advocating for me. What do you mean by that? I mean that I've been doing so much for her already. I clean her house, I mow her lawn, I even send her money every month. But I think I'm just going to stop all of that. Hold on just a second. What do you mean that you send my mom money? Oh, I thought you knew about that. I was sending your mom money so that I could help her pay down the debt she inherited after your dad died. Every month I've been sending her almost $2,000. You did know about all this, right? No, I had no idea that this was going at all. I swear. And this is the first time that I'm hearing about any debt that my dad might have had. I'd never sent my mom any money for anything like that. Wait a minute. This isn't adding up. Your mom came to me and told me that you were sending her money every month, but that it wasn't enough for her to live on. She said that she was too ashamed to go to you and say that directly, so she asked me to give her money in secret. But still, I thought you would have had some idea about what I was talking about since you were sending money too. But I guess the whole thing is just a lie, isn't it? I really don't know what to say to all of this. Carla, I am just so sorry for all of this. George, you really don't need to apologize for any of this, I swear. The fact is that I've already made up my mind, but I wanted to talk to you about this before I moved forward. I know it'll cause problems for your mom and extended family, and maybe even her neighbors, but I just feel like I don't have any other choices now. Carla, I think that you're well within your rights to react however you like. After hearing all of this, I don't feel like standing up for my mom in the slightest. In fact, I really can't even think of her as my mother anymore. 
The only thing that I care about in this world right now is you. I will support whatever decision you make. If you want to take my mom and family down for what they've done, then I think it's only fair after all the pain that they put you through. I'm just sorry that I couldn't prevent this from happening to you. It's okay, George. I know that you tried your best for me, and that's all I care about. I'll try and handle this quickly. I promise. Hey there, Rachel. It's been a while since we last talked, hasn't it? I suppose it has. Although I can't say that I was surprised after you ran off the way you did. But at least it took you out of my hair. Rachel, please don't talk to me like that. I want you to know I've done a lot of thinking since we last met. Oh, really? Is that so? And have you finally come around to the idea that you need to be trained into a good wife? You do know that that includes sending me more money. If you thought how much you were sending me before was acceptable, you'll have to send me $2,500 a month as punishment. Not only that, but I want you to present yourself to me, apologize, and then thank me and the rest of my family for disobeying me. And if you don't, I'll see that George divorces you. Well, okay then, I guess I'll do as you say. Good. I'm glad that you've finally seen the light. No, I meant that I think you were right on the dot with what you first said about me. I've decided to do as you've said and not help you out at all. What is that supposed to mean? It means that it's clear you don't want me in your life. If that's the case, then I'll give you what you want. I'll stop sending money. I'll stop coming over. I'll stop helping. I'm just done with all of it. You are on your own as of today. Even if you need help in the future, you are not going to find any with me. What kind of game are you trying to play with me right now, huh? I'm not playing any game. I'm just being the person that you've said I was the whole time. I'm being your no good, useless daughter-in-law. Now you just wait one second and listen to what I have to say. But I've already listened and now I'm doing. So the two grand that I was sending every month, the help in the house and yard, being your driver when you need it, you'll have to do it yourself. Although, I certainly hope you haven't been living beyond your means with my money because your budget is about to tighten by a lot. Are you stupid or something? This just proves my point that you do need to be trained to be a good wife. Come over to my house right now. Your training begins today. It's clear you're much worse off than I thought. <clears throat> no, I think I won't do that, actually. I'm not doing what you tell me to do anymore. In fact, I'm going to sue you. Hold on a second. You're going to sue me? You remember when you came over with your little posse and goons, right? You burst into my room by slamming the door into me and pushing me into the wall. Then you told two of your neighbors to hold me down and force me down so I'd apologize to you. Well, all that violence left marks on me. Marks that I've had looked at by my doctor and confirmed that they came from other humans. I think I saw your little brother in that crowd, didn't I? such a shame he's going to get wrapped up in this. Didn't he just land a new promotion? I sure hope getting wrapped up in this doesn't affect his career. Don't do this! Please, he has nothing to do with this at all! You'll destroy his livelihood! Not quite. You see, I'm not just after him. I'm after every single person in your lynch mob who either helped or sat by while you hurt me. And yes, that does include you. You're really going to go through with this and sue me? That's right. And there's nowhere for you to run to now. After all, you were the ringleader of the whole group. You were the one that rallied them all together so that you could force your way into my house and humiliate me. So, yes, I am suing you. Not just for breaking and entering and assault, though, but for interrupting my business with all your phone calls as well. But I was just making phone calls. What's wrong with that? I work from home, and when you and all your friends are blowing up my phone, it makes it impossible for me to stay on group calls with my office. This has happened so many times that I've actually fallen behind on certain deadlines to deal with your nonsense. There is no escape for any of you. You and all your friends and family are going to pay for what you've done. Please don't do this! 
I never wanted to get in trouble for this. You have to forgive me. I don't have to do anything that you tell me to do. But why? I'm your mother-in-law. Oh, please, don't try and kiss up now. You lied to me about being too old to take care of yourself, and you lied to me about having debt to pay off. And despite all that I've done for you, you've never once showed an ounce of gratitude to me. You've just taken my money and ruined my reputation. And George warned you to stop over and over again, but you just wouldn't listen. Well, I have had it with you. You are going to pay for all that you've put me through. Please, you can't do this. What will George think? I'm sorry to say, but George is entirely on my side in all of this. He knows what I'm doing and he thinks it's a good idea. After all the lies you told me and the money you've stolen, he thinks it's more than fair. Can't we just talk this out? This can't be happening to me. I've already talked it out with myself and I'm in agreement that you are going down. See you in court. After that, I hired a lawyer who served notice to every single person in Rachel's posse, including herself. They were all charged with B&E, assault, or failure to act in other various charges. By the end of it all, George and I were paid by at least 14 different defendants via settlements and court orders. After that, we decided to cut Rachel out of our lives and move far away. We took all of our money and bought a new house where George was working. He arranged a deal with his new job to take a permanent position in that area, and the two of us are now happily reunited. Holly, did you make it home? I saw you carrying at least four bags from that discount store a few blocks over. They look so heavy. Oh, hello, Cynthia. Where did you see me from? I could see it all from my apartment. You look like an ant from up here on the 41st floor. Wow, you have good eyes. I'm surprised you could tell it was me considering I look like an ant. I don't know anyone who shops at that store around here but you. Everyone in this building shops at stores that actually carry decent products. Even with the elevator, it must be a terrible burden to carry all those bags to your apartment. Oh. Wait, that's right. You live on the third floor. That shouldn't be much of a problem at all then. <laughs> yeah, it's not too bad. It makes for a quicker trip. But seriously, aren't you embarrassed carrying around bags from that store? I feel so bad for you. <laughs> Broadcasting that you shop at such a low class store in this building. I wouldn't be able to show my face in public if I were you. <laughs> Have you considered using a grocery delivery service? The one I use has a terrific selection of high quality products. No thanks. There are things they sell at this store you can't get much of anywhere else. So I'll pass. And besides, I like going shopping in person. Aw, that's a shame. Well, I suppose you may have had a hard time affording it anyway. <laughs> really, that store suits a person living on the third floor like you perfectly. Is that so? But seriously, Holly, what were you thinking getting an apartment in this building? You should have just moved into one that's more on your level. Is it just for the bragging rights? <laughs> And on the third floor, too? That's practically the basement. <laughs> uh, no. It's not for bragging rights or anything. I do have my reasons, though. Aw, are you sad that you couldn't afford a higher floor? I can't imagine how dreadful the view is from the third floor. Yuck. Oh, that's right. We're having a barbecue this weekend. Would you like to come? I feel bad for you, so I thought I'd reach out to lend a hand. No thanks. I don't think I've ever had anyone announce that they were inviting me out of pity before. I'm not sure whether to feel grateful or insulted. 
Are you sure you won't come? There's going to be a breathtaking view from up where we're having it. I don't think you'll want to miss out, Holly. Wait, where are you doing this barbecue? Aren't you going to a park or campsite or something? Like some commoner? As if. We're going to have it on the roof of this building. Imagine it. Smelling the delicious meat cooking while having a full view of the entire city. It's going to be fabulous. Doesn't that sound great? You're doing it on the roof? The roof is off limits though, isn't it? The door is locked 24-7 for safety reasons. But not just that. It's also the owner's private property. And so what? <laughs> My hubby's got a trick up his sleeve. Or so he tells me. We'll bring equipment for the barbecue and a portable pool. Plus, I hear it's got a green space. You know those things where they plant grass on the roof? I can let my kids play barefoot. Wait, what? You're gonna grill on the grass? We haven't had rain in weeks. You could start a fire. Oh, don't be such a drag. It'll be fine. <laughs> Since when have you been such a stickler for the rules? It's not like you own the place. <laughs> Well, if you don't want to come, I won't force you. Go ahead and cook your frozen hamburgers in your kitchen on the third floor, I guess. We'll be having a luxurious barbecue with grade A meat on the roof. Honestly, I have no idea how poor people can live the way they do. I feel so sorry for your children for being forced into such a lifestyle. I hope they can overcome it someday. Anyway, if you're really having that barbecue, then be careful. I don't think you'll be able to get on the roof, though. <laughs> don't worry about us, Holly. You enjoy yourself as much as you can on your income this weekend. I know we will. Hey, Cynthia? I just got a call from the property manager. They said there was a fire on the roof. Huh? They called you about that? That's odd. Why would they do that? It doesn't concern you. It was just a little fire. Nothing worth making a fuss over. And don't worry. It didn't come anywhere near you people on the low floors. Just a little fire? It burned up the grass and the flowers that were on the roof. And even the safety fence got burned. Yeah, it was a wee bit of an accident. <laughs> you see, the kids were just dying to do some fireworks. So we let them have their fun. And before we knew it, poof, up in flames. <laughs> we used a fire extinguisher to put it out, so nothing else got burned. And no one was hurt. So all's well that ends well. I don't believe this. And by the way, how did you get on the roof? The door was chained and padlocked shut. Oh, those. Honestly, what jerk went and put those there? They weren't there the day before when we went to check it out. It didn't delay us much, though. My hubby just busted them open with a chain cutter and hammer. <laughs> it didn't take but a few minutes. You broke open the locks? You do realize that's the definition of breaking and entering, right? And then you went and started a fire? What on earth were you thinking? Well, what's done is done, right? I suppose we may have to pay to fix everything. Ugh, such a pain. Oh yeah. Hey, Holly. How's about you pay the $6,000 repair cost? What? Me? Why should I? Who knew we were having a barbecue and didn't stop us? That makes you partially responsible. <laughs> or if you'd like, I could just tell the building owner that it was all your idea. <laughs> You're making no sense. Why would I have any responsibility when I wasn't even there? Oh, come on. You can pay a measly $6,000. Your rent is cheaper than mine anyway. <laughs> I'll have them send the bill to your place, okay, dearie? 
You're still not making any sense. And where are you getting the $6,000 figure from anyway? Who told you that was what the repairs would cost? It's just a guess. It might be even more than that. <laughs> okay, I've had enough of this. You broke into a private area and started a fire. And you don't even show the slightest sign of remorse? Pay for the damage and get out of the building. You and everyone else at the party are being evicted. What? Evicted? Who do you think you are? What makes you think that you can go around telling people they're being evicted, Holly? Huh? You mean, you still don't get it? I'm the building owner, Cynthia. Huh? The owner? Yes, yeah, Cynthia. I own this building. And since you broke into my personal space and caused a fire, I am well within my rights to sue and evict you. Excuse me? No way. This is a joke, right? There's no way you're the owner. <laughs> you don't have to believe me, but it's the truth. How do you think I knew about the chain and padlock? I put them there. I was trying to stop you from doing anything stupid. I never in my wildest dreams would have thought you'd break them with a bolt cutter and hammer. Wait, you're really the owner? Then why are you living on the third floor? If you're the owner, couldn't you be living on the top floor? I'm afraid of heights. You got a problem with that? It's none of your business where I choose to live. Well, okay, but... But why didn't you tell me you're the owner? I had no idea. You, you were tricking me. This was all a trap, wasn't it? In the past, a tenant who knew I was the owner made some absolutely ludicrous demands. Like turning the top floor into a pool and making it free for residents. Or putting an open air bath in every room. It was a non-stop onslaught of idiocy. So I decided since then, I would only tell those who needed to know that I was the owner. And I evicted that person for doing something stupid. Just like I'm going to do to you. You can't be serious. You're really going to evict me? I didn't mean any harm. It was just a barbecue. You didn't mean any harm? Ever since you met me, you've been mocking me for being poor just because I live on the third floor. You just did that no more than five minutes ago. You broke into my private garden on the top floor, caused a fire with fireworks. And even after all that, you can't even muster up a single iota of remorse within you. If that's what you do when you mean no harm, I can't imagine what you do if you did mean harm. I shudder at the thought. Come on, Holly. Give me a break. Oh, and by the way, you talk a lot about living on a high floor, but you don't even live here, Cynthia. What? Yes, I do. Cynthia, I'm the owner. I know these things. I know the names of every person with the lease here. It wasn't that much of a concern to me, so I've let it go up until now. But the room on the 41st floor that you're so proud of, it's not yours. According to the records, there's only one man living in that apartment. Is that your hubby? Well, um... And that hubby of yours. My records show that he's single. So it's interesting that you would call him your hubby. As a matter of fact, you said your husband has been out of the country on business for a few years. If your husband is living overseas and your hubby is checking in out of the building every day, could your husband and your hubby in fact be two different people? Okay, I can explain everything. And then there's the matter of your kids. Lately, they've been getting dropped off at school by their grandmother. Do your folks live nearby? Are you perhaps shoving your kids off onto your parents while you're living with another man? My, how scandalous! Please, Holly, I'm sorry. Don't tell my husband about this. Don't worry. I won't tell him anything. I wouldn't even know how to contact him. Oh, that's a relief. So instead... 
I'll be going to the police, as well as to my lawyer. You and your hubby are to leave the building within two weeks, and I'll be sending you a bill for the damage you did to the roof. My lawyer will be contacting you with the details, as well as sending a report to your parents and husband. No, you can't! Even after all this, you have zero remorse. And are you just afraid that your husband will find out about your affair? You're really a piece of work, Cynthia. I'll be moving through the eviction process as quickly as legally possible. So go ahead and pack up your things whenever you get the chance. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm remorseful. Super remorseful. I'll pay all the repair costs. Please. You don't need to apologize anymore. You just need to pay up and get out. That's all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm very busy. My lawyer and the police should be contacting you soon. Good luck. After working for a few days with the police, she got hit with charges for breaking and entering, malicious destruction of property, and quite a few other big ones. My lawyer discussed the issues with hers, and she ended up accepting every single one of our demands. She was hit with compensatory and punitive damages and forced to leave the apartment building. As she and her hubby were hauling box after box full of heavy looking objects down from the 41st floor to the parking lot. The sounds of their lover's quarrel echoed throughout the entire building. It was quite a scene. After her parents and husband found out about her affair, the former disowned her and the latter divorced her. Astonishingly, even after all that, she still tried calling me to apologize and ask me to get her husband to take her back. But I just shouted, no, into the receiver, hung up, and blocked her number. What an incredible person she is. At least I'll never have to deal with her again. Wait, why are you here, Emily? What? You were alive? I thought you might have died. Well, it's Sharon. Ew, yourself? Wait, you didn't come to steal Jason back from me, did you? Jason's already my husband. He doesn't care about you anymore. So it's not gonna work. I didn't plan on doing anything. Anyways, I was so surprised when I saw you. Why are you at this apartment? I thought you became homeless after I sold Jason and you were kicked out of the house with a not a thing. You were a housewife with no job experience and nowhere to go, right? I was just shocked when you passed me at the entrance. Thanks for the summary of what happened seven years ago. But don't forget that I had enough skills to find a job. What? Thanks to it, I was able to find a job just one week after you took everything away from me. Which means that you were homeless for at least one week, right? That's shorter than I thought, but the joke's on you! Since when did you care about what happened to me? What? Of course I care! Imagining what kind of poor lifestyle you must be living was so much fun these last seven years. Oh, is that so? I don't know what kind of lifestyle is considered poor in your standards, but I've at least been able to get a place at a high-rise condo. What? Oh, one of the tiny rooms in the lower floors, right? Me and Jason live on the 26th floor. There are only 27 floors, so it's basically the top. Are you trying to make some sort of hierarchy based on the floor we live in? <laughs> that sounds pretty petty, so don't involve me in it, okay? So, what floor do you live in? I won't tell you. Aw, never mind. It'll be so embarrassing if people find out a relative of mine lives in one of the lower floors. Which is why I won't ask you anymore. <laughs> Hold on! Are you serious? You must be kidding me! My stomach actually hurts right now from laughing. What is it now? You work with a client of the company Jason owns? What? Jason inherited his uncle's company one year ago and became the CEO. So Jason had to go over to one of his client companies today, which is when he said that he saw you on the way home at the reception counter. Oh, I guess I did see him today. He was pretty far away, so I couldn't get a good look. So do you work part-time there? Or are you a dispatch worker? What does it matter to you? You won't tell me, so you must be a part-time worker. I mean, I guess it's hard for a housewife in her 30s to get a job. <laughs> I'll tell you this now, but the only reason I haven't blocked you yet is to see what you're going to do. 
What? I'm not leaving you in block to listen to you boast or insult me. And it's definitely not to tell you about what's going on in my life. Aww, but we've only got each other now that mom and dad are gone. Let's get along. Says the person who stole my husband and made our relationship, which was not good to begin with, even worse. But it would have been fine if only you acted like an adult. Talking to you is a waste of time. You, the part-time worker, is going to insult me, the CEO's wife? I'll tell Jason. You've heard of M Corporations, right? Are you sure you want to anger the CEO of the company your place is working with? M Corporations, huh? That is the place my company is working with right now, I guess. I'm assuming he became CEO just because there is no one else to inherit the company. So you do understand? Then you best not make me mad. I mean, we're not going to be working with M Corporations anymore starting from next month. So why bother? <laughs> what did you say? Emily, just what did you do? What do you mean? I'm talking about yesterday. You said that your company wouldn't be working with M Corporations anymore, right? Jason told me that the reason he went to your place was to ask them not to cut ties. Oh, that? He did come to my company, but couldn't meet the CEO, right? Yes, and he's saying that the CEO of A Corporations he couldn't meet was you. What's this about? Well, yes, I am the CEO. A Corporations is a company I started five years ago. No way! It seems that Jason knew this since a while back, but he must have not told you to protect your pride. But you said you were just a part-time worker. Liar! Um, didn't you just assume I was a part-timer worker because I wouldn't answer you? Go and check the chat history. Oh, and one more thing. You probably haven't heard this yet, so I should probably tell you. What? It's about the alimony. Huh? Oh, you mean the money you tried to take from us for me stealing Jason from you? The date's already expired. Too bad. I'm sorry to break the news while you seem to be having so much fun, but I actually did receive an alimony. What? Seven years ago, I was kicked out of the house in the middle of the night by you and Jason, right? I had no place to go that night and was what you call homeless. But a friend of mine, who was abroad on work, was supposed to come home the next day. I waited for her to return and contacted her. She gave me a place to stay and even found a lawyer and detective for me. It was quick from there. Month later, I succeeded in having Jason pay fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand? Hmm. So he really didn't tell you anything, huh? Uh. Who cares about that anymore? We were talking about why your company cut ties with Jason's. Do something about it. What exactly do you want me to do? I'm telling you to start dealing with Jason's company again. This is an order from the wife of the CEO of M Corporations. What do you mean, order? <laughs> you probably contacted me and attempt to do something about the Jason problem, Sharon. But it's me, the CEO of A Corporations, that has the upper hand. What? To put it simply, my company was giving Jason's company jobs. We've been working with M Corporations since Jason's uncle was CEO. But the quality of work has noticeably decreased ever since Jason took charge. A series of unbelievable mistakes during the past three months was the final straw. It's been affecting our work as well, so we decided to have another company do the work. Which means that we won't be dealing with M Corporations anymore. What? Can you forgive a few mistakes? That's why Jason got rid of you in the first place. You're too uptight. This is business. This has nothing to do with this. But... You know, I did ask M Corporations to do something about it multiple times, but they wouldn't listen, which is why I decided to find another company to work with. Rude! Uh, say whatever you want. As the CEO of A Corporations, I have a duty to protect the reputation of the company and the lives of our workers, even if it means I need to make hard decisions. You're inhuman! I'll say this again, but this is business. 
this was a logical decision based on the fact, so I have no intention of changing my mind. You stubborn hag! Leaving that aside, you're still meeting Stan? What? You know, the guy you seduced in high school thinking I had a crush on him? You were able to get him hired at M Corporations, right? What is it suddenly? That stuff happened ages ago. Don't you notice that you dug yourself a hole, Sherrod? What do you mean? I'm talking about yesterday. You said that Jason saw me at the reception lobby, but in reality it was Stan, who went with Jason, that saw me, right? What? Jason already knew I was the CEO of A Corporations, so he would have came over and talked to me if he had noticed, but he didn't and just passed me by. Stan, on the other hand, noticed me and smiled when our eyes met. Not only that, but yesterday soon after you texted me, I got a text from Stan saying, I didn't know you were part-time at A Corporations. Ha <laughs> ha Huh? I asked him where he had heard that from, and he said that you told him. Oh shit! Well, this is just what I speculated, based on the evidence, but I told Stan's wife about my suspicions, so she took a peek at Stan's phone and stuff. What? She thanked me after she found a bunch of evidence pointing to Stan cheating. Oh, what do you think you're doing? By the way, Stan's wife is sitting next to me right now. Why? Get ready because I'm going to hire an acquaintance of mine who's a lawyer and bring you two to court, she says. But... Oh, she says she told Jason about it too. Seriously? Jesus, what's happening right now? Emily, give me back my money. You know the alimony you said Jason paid for the two of us. I needed to pay the alimony Jason and Stan's wife are asking of me. <coughs> Emily, hey, give me my money back. I don't quite understand what she meant when she said to give me her money back. But she finally got it when a lawyer explained to her that the alimony Jason paid to me wasn't hers. Sharon and Stan began meeting each other before she and Jason got married. So the money they'll have to pay is quite a lot. Apparently, my sister, who became a housewife when she married Jason, said what? I have to find a way to get all this money on my own? And then fell on her knees. Stan, on the other hand, got a loan from somewhere and immediately paid it off. And no one's heard of him since. Jason's company, on the other hand, went bankrupt since no one was giving them work anymore. My sister, who can no longer rely on Jason's help, now works non-stop at a shop to pay off her debt. Listen up, Margaret. We are never letting you live with us. Got it? Rachel? I'm sorry, what is this about? I don't remember ever talking about living with you before. I'm simply letting you know we will never let you live with us. Rachel, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? I figured you'd ask us eventually, so I'm making myself clear. I'd rather not deal with any bullying from my mother-in-law, you know? Ah, uh, is that what you're worried about? I suppose I'm grateful you made your position clear to me. But I'd like to make myself clear too. I never had any intention of living together with you and Eddie. Huh? My relationship with my mother-in-law was what broke up my own marriage 20 years ago. So I knew I would never want to put my own daughter-in-law through what happened to me. You can ask Eddie about this yourself. I've told him that I'll take care of myself when I get old. When you get old, huh? So that means you want to live with us now until you get old to save money, doesn't it? No, dear. I'm still working and have more than enough means to take care of myself including saving up for when I retire. So no, I have no need to live with you in order to save money. I'm doing fine on my own right now. And just to be clear again, I don't believe I'll ask to live with you in the future either. So please calm down. There's no need for you to make such a strong declaration like this. You're not gonna get me to let down my guard so easily, Margaret. I know you're making plans as we speak to sneak your way into our lives got you all figured out. I am making no such plans. Cut the act, Margaret. I have evidence that proves you're going to try and move in with us. Evidence? 
and I won't let you get away with it. What evidence? You lose Margaret. Game over. What in the world are you talking about? Hey, Mom. So I haven't messaged you in a while. How are the preparations going? Hello, Eddie. Yes, they're going just fine. I never expected to have to deal with moving houses at my age, but you did just get married and leave home. So I guess you could say that the timing was just right, I suppose. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Tomorrow's the big day, huh? I mentioned this before, but I'm out of town on business and I won't be able to help you out. That's fine, Eddie. I went ahead and hired a moving company that will take care of everything, from packing to transporting and unloading. Ah, well that's good to hear. Oh, and by the way, I had a question for you. Do you have a moment? Sure, Mom, what's up? Have you said anything to Rachel about me moving in with you recently? Huh? No, never. I mean, you've always said you had no interest in moving in with us. Yes, and my feelings on that are still unchanged. I thought so, and I've talked to Rachel about this before. What brings that up? Rachel sent me a line message the other day. She suddenly declared that she would never let me move in with you. That's weird. Why did she do that? I have no idea. That's why I'm asking you. But it seems like you don't know what's going on either. Yeah, that's news to me. I know we've never gotten along particularly well, but I have no idea what I could have said that would give her the impression I want to live with you. Yeah, I mean, you're moving tomorrow and everything. She's aware of that, so she's got to know that there's no way for you to live with us. I thought so too. I wonder what in the world has gotten into her. Yeah, I'll try and talk to her. I get back from my business trip in two days. I'll ask her about it then. Thank you, Eddie. Please do. Hey, Margaret. How's it feel? Was it lonely when you pulled up to our apartment, ready to force your way in with us, only to find it completely empty? Huh? Um, good evening, Rachel. Are you still going on about that? LOL, don't try and turn this around on me. I can only imagine the look on your face when you pulled up with the moving trucks. Ready to barge in on our lives and start controlling us, only to discover we had already moved out before you got there. Um, Rachel... I knew you were trying to force your way into our apartment, Margaret. I've known for weeks now. Sorry to rain on your parade, but we've already moved out of that house and into my parents' house. Your plan was a complete failure. But I do kind of feel bad for you. So, I tell you what. You take care of the place and I'll let you live there for ten grand a month. Oh wait, that's right. You can't afford that on your measly little part-time salary, can you? I bet you don't even make ten grand in a whole year. Too bad. <laughs> oh my, ten thousand dollars a month? That's awfully steep. But even if I could pay that, I wouldn't. What do you mean? I mean I'm living on my own, so I'm fine. <laughs> what a sad, lonely way to retire. I'm not retiring for another ten years. Yeah, which is exactly why you hatched your plot in the first place. Rachel, listen. What now? You're right, I did move today. But I didn't move into your old apartment. Huh? I was appointed by corporate to be the deputy branch manager at our new facility in Miami. So I'm renting out my old house and moving into a new one in the Miami suburbs. Deputy branch manager? Weren't you just a part-timer? Oh, I haven't been a part-timer for years now, Rachel. I joined this company soon after my divorce when I was trying to support my kids as a single mother, and they eventually made me full-time. And things have gone so smoothly after that that I rose through the ranks to the point that they're giving me this new assignment. Wow. Now that I'm thinking of it, I'm sure I told your mother all about that when we first met before the wedding. Were you listening during our conversation? I could see how you would misunderstand things if you were only listening to bits and pieces at a time. I... guess I wasn't. 
This is just a guess, but were you under the impression that I was so hard up for money working part-time that I had to rely on you two for support in order to make ends meet? I suppose you may have thought that when Eddie moved out, I started having trouble keeping up with the house payment. And then when Eddie mentioned to you that I was moving... Your preconceived notions of my financial position, and your general dislike for me, filled in the gaps of information left for my discussion with your mother. And you assumed that your meddling mother-in-law was finally carrying out her wicked plan, or something to that effect. And then, in an attempt to counteract my alleged plan, you immediately made plans to move out before I moved in. Do I have all that right? Well, I mean, you didn't seem like the type to be getting promoted at your job or anything. Is that so? You said you were moving into your parents' house, but tell me, did you also move Eddie's things there already? Yeah, why? When I talked to Eddie online yesterday, he didn't seem to be aware that any of this was going on. Your parents' house is at least a two-hour drive from Eddie's company, and that's on a good day. Did you think of Eddie's commute when you made this move? Uh... Did you talk to Eddie about any of this before you made the decision to move? Well, um... If you really made this decision alone and left Eddie completely out of the loop, I think you might just be in a world of trouble, Rachel. Rachel! Hi, Eddie. Are you back from your business trip? Rachel, what were you thinking? How could you do this without talking to me first? I know this must come as a bit of a surprise, but I can explain. Anyway, I'm going to live at my parents' house for a while. I'm divorcing you. Huh? I never thought you would be this much of a self-centered, careless moron! I'm divorcing you as soon as possible! But why? Margaret, talk some sense into Eddie, would you? Oh, hello again, Rachel. What's going on with Eddie? He wants to divorce me. I suppose this must have something to do with you moving without telling him, yes? But, I mean, what am I supposed to do about that? I heard he moved. I canceled the lease on the old apartment, and you're already down in Miami. He's got nowhere else to go but here. Isn't that precisely the problem? Huh? You still don't get it. From Eddie's point of view, what you did was force him to move in with his mother-in-law against his will. Which is exactly what you were so afraid of me doing. Despite, may I add, the fact that I had no such intentions. Wait. Oh, oh no. So you finally get it. Oh no. I didn't mean to do that. I suppose your only choice is to have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with Eddie. I'll be staying out of this. You can work this out together as a couple. I wish the both of you the best. Margaret, you've got to talk some sense into Eddie. Oh, you'd like me to give him some advice? Well, if I were to do that, it would probably be to tell him to divorce you. No, Margaret. You're supposed to get him to not divorce me. Do you honestly think I would take your side after everything you said to me? But... I gave you my answer. Please, wait, Margaret! I have nothing else to say to you, Rachel. Goodbye. According to Eddie, Rachel's older brother and his wife had just moved out of their parents' house. And Rachel's plan was to use that timing to move in. Unfortunately, Rachel's parents weren't interested in having her move in with them. With no place to go, Rachel initially resisted the divorce. But when Eddie threatened to get lawyers involved, she relented and they divorced amicably. Rachel's parents still didn't let her move back in after that. So she got a live-in job as a maid at a local hotel. But her habit of jumping to conclusions led to constant disagreements with customers and she was fired. She repeated this pattern at every single job she got for the next several months. And word eventually got around to just about every business in town what a problem employee she was. 
so she had to move to a new city and start completely over. Gloria? Where's this month's payment? I just went to the bank and the transfer hadn't come through yet. Mom, it's Thursday. I don't get paid until tomorrow. Oh, you're right. I thought it was Friday. Don't scare me like that, Gloria. I was so nervous. To make up for this, send me 1500 right now. Mom, I can't. How dare you speak to your mother like that? After all the trouble I went through raising you? I only have a thousand dollars in my account. That's all? What did you waste your money on? Fine. I'll take the one thousand, so send it to me immediately. Mom. Oh, and you'll still owe me your regular payment of fifteen hundred tomorrow as well? That's too much, Mom! It's your punishment for scaring me just now. Take responsibility for your actions. How am I supposed to pay my bills? My lifestyle is more important than your bills. Now go to the bank and send me my money. I can't do it today, Mom. I'll do the regular 1500 tomorrow. Excuse me? Are you refusing a direct order from your mother? I have to get back to work, Mom. I'll talk to you later. Don't you dare, Gloria! Hey, Gloria. You seem kind of down at work today. What's the matter? Hi, John. Don't tell me. Is it your mom again? Yeah. She thought today was my payday and she was angry that I didn't make this month's payment. Then when I told her it was only Thursday, she said I had to send her a thousand dollar payment for scaring her in addition to the fifteen hundred tomorrow. You didn't pay her, did you? No way, I told her I couldn't do it. Well, I'm glad you stood up to her. Thanks, John. I'm sorry I didn't talk to you sooner. No, it's alright. You have your own job to do and all. And it's not like I'm having a fight with my mother, so it is what it is for now. If you say so. But man, you've been making those payments to her for eight years now. We don't put a stop to this soon. This is going to start impacting our future. I'm sorry for how mom is. My parents broke up because my mom cheated. So she couldn't get any child support and had to take care of me as a single mother with just a high school education. When she asks me to show her some appreciation for all she went through, I can't really fight back. You don't need to apologize. But I do think that it's time for us to think about putting an end to it. I know. By the way, you haven't told her about getting hired by my company, right? She doesn't know you're moving? No, I haven't told her anything. You said it would be for the best to keep that information from her, so I never brought it up. Then she doesn't know about me either, does she? No, she doesn't know your name or that I even have a boyfriend. We could use that to our advantage. How? Leave it all to me, Gloria. I have a plan I've been working on. What's your plan? It depends on what your mom's next move is, so I'll fill you in on the details when the time comes. Okay, I trust you. Gloria. I sent you the 1500 yesterday, Mom. What about the other 1000? Are you talking about the thousand from the other day? I told you, Mom, I can't give that to you. If I can't even pay my rent, how do you expect me to keep sending you $1,500 every month? Do you get that? Well, I suppose you have a point. I'm glad you understand. Now, I have some chores to do. Hold it right there. I found a way to turn the $1,500 a month I'm getting from you into $10,000 a month. Huh? And I'll need you to cooperate. Wait, what? $10,000? There's gotta be a catch. Did you get caught up in some crazy investment scheme? The best case scenario is fraud, Mom. Worst case scenario is you either go deep in debt or get charged with a crime for being involved. Oh, don't worry. It's nothing like that at all. Then what in the world is it? I have great news. I found you a husband. What? You can finally get married, Gloria. 
He's the CEO of an IT firm. He's fabulously wealthy, so I'll have your monthly payments increase to 10000 He can afford that with no issue. Mom, what are you talking about? You found a husband for me? I was surprised too, dear. All of a sudden, a strikingly handsome man came by my house. I'm not sure how he met you or where, but he said he fell in love with you at first sight. I'm not sure what he sees in a girl like you who's only good for a measly 1500 a month. It's truly baffling to me. But he says that if you marry him, he'll pay me 10000 a month. This guy came to your house and offered you $10,000 for me. And you believed him? He showed me his driver's license and business card and everything checked out. He even signed a contract. So, we need to get ready for the wedding now. Hold on, Mom. This is all happening way too suddenly. I'm going to go cool off and contact you later. John? Did you by chance go and see my mom? I was actually just about to contact you about that. I guess your mom got to you first. Yeah, just now. Long story short, she found a rich guy who fell in love with me at first sight and said he's going to pay her $10,000 a month if I marry him. Oh, and also, apparently he signed a contract? Oh, that. It said... In exchange for receiving Gloria as my wife, Gloria's monthly $1,500 payments will cease in lieu of financial support totaling $10,000. Huh? When I talked to your mom, I told her that since she's giving her only daughter to me in marriage, things won't be able to go on the way they are for her. So in exchange for giving me you, I'll give her $10,000 in support to help her adjust to her new lifestyle. Wait, so you... It gets better. Can I keep going? Please do. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> the other day, I went and saw your dad. My dad? And after talking to him, I realized your mom had been lying to you. About what? Your dad did pay child support, Gloria. What? Yep, $1,500 a month. He paid on time every month until you turned 20. So my mom was lying to me? I'm sorry to say, but yeah. It looks like she spent all the money that was supposed to go to you on herself. I can't believe it. I worked all through high school to help pay our bills. We have enough proof to confront your mom about this. What do you think? Well, no, it's all right. You sure? If there's anything we can do to get my dad's child support payments back, I'd be all in. But if it's just for personal satisfaction, I don't think it'd be worth the trouble. <laughs> Besides, with this, I can cut her out of my life with no regrets. I think it would be better if I just fade away quietly. If that's what you want, I'll support you. Okay, so next to her at business, I have her marriage paperwork. Can I bring it over to your place now? Sure, I'll be waiting. Hello, Gloria. John sent me the 10,000 today. Looks like you ended up agreeing to marry him. That was a wise choice, dear. So your monthly payments to me will be 10,000 a month from now on. It's about time you made yourself useful to me. <laughs> hmm? But he just told me we could stop sending you money. What? Of course you can't. Don't be ridiculous. He said he'd send me 10,000 a month. Did he really? Oh, that's right. I'm moving out of this tiny little apartment. I'm planning to move into a hotel suite now. Since I'll be getting 10K a month, I won't need to work anymore. So I quit my job too. Ah, oh, I can't wait to begin my new life of luxury. It feels so good to be rich. Gloria, hurry up and wire 10k to my account this instant. Oh, this is terrible. I made an awful mistake. 
When I called John to tell him this month's payment hadn't come yet, he told me that his contract didn't say 10k per month. He said that in exchange for your hand in marriage, you would cease your monthly payments, and he would provide me with a single $10,000 payment to help me adjust to my new lifestyle. But that's not all. Your father wants his child support payments back. He's even getting a lawyer! Why is this happening to me? This is terrible. I screwed up big time. I spent all of that 10k John gave me last month on room service at the hotel. I thought he was going to send me more every month. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? In any case, Gloria, hurry up and send me the $10,000 as soon as possible. That should be enough for the next few weeks. Do it today, Gloria. Today! Don't keep me waiting. Gloria, why didn't you send me my money yesterday? I had to check out at the hotel. So I planned to move into your apartment and live with you, but when I got there, some strange woman I'd never met was living there. I called your company to see if they knew where I could find you. They said that you'd resigned more than six months ago. Where did you move to? Where are you working now? Gloria? Answer me! I am your mother, Gloria! Gloria! My mom went berserk when she realized what happened. I was worried at first that my mom might try to storm into John's company, but John said that the business card he gave her was for a shell company he set up for the purposes of tricking her. She tried to go to her old company and get them to hire her back, but they'd already hired a new person for her position, and they were pretty upset at the way she had quit suddenly with no advance notice, so they probably wouldn't have taken her back anyway. She tried calling me a bunch of times to demand money from me, but John eventually got tired of it and told her to never call again. And if she ever did, he'd call the police and have her charged with harassment. That was probably convincing enough, but just to be safe, I'm changing my phone number as soon as possible. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.